In today's video, we're going to talk about one of those critical skills for cloud architects and enterprise architects that most people don't talk about, business capability mapping. And being able to map out a business's capability is going to be critical to any cloud architecture or enterprise architecture that's really going to provide any value for the business. So what is business capability mapping and why does it matter? So before we can change a business, we need to understand that business. Before we can tune or optimize a business with any kind of technology, we need to know what that business is great at. How, what gives it its uh, capabilities to compete against others? So along with mapping out key things like the business architecture and key business processes, we really need to map out that organization's capability. And a business capability is what that business can do or does that delivers value either internally or externally to its clients. So we create these capability maps to truly understand the organization, the organization's hierarchy and how things are done. So for example, we map out finance. The finance department, for example, may have many capabilities and also sub capabilities. So we might uh, say have the finance department and underneath the finance department, we may have a payroll department and underneath that finance department, we may have some tax people and underneath that we may have some bookkeepers and generalized accountants that are also working there as well. So that would be the capabilities of the finance unit. Now, when we map out our business capability maps, we're going to be focusing on the what the business can do, not how to do it. Very high level architecture type things. And that way the map will stay relevant over time. For example, AI might do something that was once done by a person, but the capability map, it really doesn't matter because it's what the business can do. And a good capability map will enable an organization to truly understand its functional strengths over time. And the next key component that's of critical importance to the cloud architect or the enterprise architect or any architect for that matter, is when we know the business's capabilities, we can align all the efforts of our architecture for that organization's strategic goals. And that's why this is so important. So the criticality of aligning the organization's people, processes, and technology, the criticality of making sure the technology solutions provide business value means we need to understand the business long before we're going to change anything with it. So let's talk a lot more about why this matters. If we understand the business, we can make changes in it. When we truly have mapped out the business, we may find gaps in the business, our areas that are hurting the business because they're not uh, do, performing in those areas. We may find redundancies where two parts of the business are doing the same thing. And then we can take those redundant people and move them to a part of the company where they will be successful, thrive, and the company will perform better. And, but, and that's why this matters. So if we're going to focus on an architectural investment that could be a billion dollars of technology for a global enterprise, we need to make sure that that technology investment will provide a measurable business output, a business outcome. And unfortunately, most architectures don't. Between 70 and 90% of cloud architectures fail to provide business value. Unfortunately, a lot of people skip these steps of capability mapping, business architecture, and that's gonna be really critical for a real client digital transformation. So if we don't have a capability map, what's really gonna be going on? We're gonna be guessing and we'll make changes that may hurt one part of the business or another part of the business. So in any any person architecture, we need to understand critically how the business does what it does, what those employees need, the way people do things, and of course the business's capabilities. So that's why we're creating business capability maps. And we're gonna use these capability maps potentially during a merger or an opposite or, or, or an acquisition. And we may need that from a people perspective and a process perspective, but we're also going to need that from a technology perspective. We want to harmonize the systems, harmonize the operations potentially after a merger. Now, any kind of technology project, again, we want to do this business capability mapping because we want to make sure that the business and the technology is aligned and that the technology will offer that business some benefit. So anytime we've got real new leadership, we probably want to do something like this before we make a major investment or expansion. 
We really want to understand that business and everything it can do. So the key components of a business capability map are the core and high value functions of the business first. And in that point, we're going to make sure that we map critical functions out. And that's going to be the real element. With the core, we're going to be talking about what really uh, matters most for the business. The core things it does, maybe it's product creation or maybe it's selling of the product. And of course, every business will have supporting capabilities or things that help support the main elements of the business. Maybe it's HR, maybe it's IT, maybe it's finance. And of course, we also have those strategic sides of the business that are going to be guiding decision making, say strategy, planning, and governance. And that's why we need to map all this out so we know everything we have to deal with prior to making a change so we can make sure our cloud architecture or enterprise architecture is highly effective. I hope you've enjoyed this video on business capability mapping for cloud architecture and enterprise architecture careers. Now, if you'd like to become a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or a security architect or an AI architect, we have programs to help you uh, get your first architect job, but we also hold a free webinar every week. It's live and free on Zoom. In this architecture webinar, we'll talk about what we do for the various architecture roles, the exact skills you need for these various architecture roles, like a cloud architect versus enterprise architect versus security architect versus AI architect. We'll talk about every skill you need to get hired and what you need to do to get hired way, way, way beyond certifications. And these free webinars we have every week. You can register for these free webinars by uh, going to the description of this video and, and clicking the link. In the description of this video, we also have our free guides on how to win the interview, free guides on, for example, on how to become an AI architect or a cloud architect, and many other free resources to assist you with your cloud architect, security architect, enterprise architect, or AI architect career. So go, go sign up, they're completely free. They'll be emailed to you. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now. I hope to meet you in a live free Zoom webinar or see you in another video. Take care. See you soon.